fantastic day. We're here again today, another brilliant turnout. But we have to be honest, we are in a worse place today than we were a year and a half ago. There's been more cuts, more pay freezes, more privatization. So that means we've got to ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it? And I think this, and my union thinks this, if winning the argument doesn't stop them, if marching doesn't stop them, then what we got to do is what they've done in France, in Greece, in Portugal, and in Spain. And we need to have strike action right across the economy. Now is the time to turn around and say that if we're all under attack, then we've all got to defend ourselves together. And it's about time that we look at the practicalities of having a 24-hour general strike. Comrades, brothers and sisters, this has been a marvellous day. Not just in terms of the numbers that have marched here today against austerity and against the attacks of the government, but an historic conquest we witnessed today by the three speeches of Bob Crow, of Mark Savoca and Lenny McCloskey committing this trade union movement to a one-day general strike. That is the first time since 1926 that the official movement of the British working class has come out and committed to a general strike. So why, why marching today? What's this about? Well, what this is about really is that the government's offensive, uh, it's cuts offensive, which, let's make, make it clear, is the biggest austerity attack on working class people in this country since the early 1920s. Um, war was declared two years ago when they announced 80 odd billion pounds worth of cuts. We know that's not working and now there's going to be billions more. They've just announced 16 billion pounds extra, 10 billion of which are going to be welfare cuts. Really, we haven't got a choice. Today's march is about telling the government that we are not going to take what's coming, but I think it's more than that. I think today is a platform for the further action that we need to take, and that's why the National Shop Stewards Network has been demanding that the TUC call a 24-hour general strike in Britain to, um, to really make it clear that this is a battle that has to go to the end and we have to defeat this government. and I'm also a Unison rep. In the hospital trust where I work, we're suffering dreadful cuts in privatisation. But private companies take over services that do a really, really bad job. Cleaning and catering have been taken over and we've ended up with food like sloth and really dirty hospitals and the rise of MRSA. Um, we're all going to go into the NHS professionally and we're fighting um, for the NHS patients. Of Stop the privatisation of the NHS, which Tories seem to intend to want to do. In my area, 600 people have lost their jobs. A third of all libraries nationally have closed, and we have seen our conditions get worse and worse and worse. Listening on the radio this morning when they were commenting on the demonstrations, one observer said, Isn't it great? Unemployment is going down. Unemployment is going down, but of course it's going down because many of us have been crowded into low-paid, temporary, part-time, insecure jobs. In the city that I live in, in Salford, over 65% of children are growing up in poverty. But the more sickening statistic than that is that the majority of those children growing up in poverty in the city that I live in live in a household where at least one parent is working. The march today, in which hundreds of thousands of members from across the trade union movement are here, will show to this government, finally, that there is an alternative. An alternative to their austerity programme that is ruining the lives of millions of workers and ordinary people in this country. I've brought somebody with me that we've been uh, carrying around the march today. 
uh, a face that sets terror into, uh, into teachers, or if not terror, certainly anger. Because Michael Gove, what he's trying to do is to pull up the ladder and turn back the clock on everything that's been won in education over the last decades. I'm here with socialist students, we're supporting the march today and that's because thousands of young people are this year starting university having to pay £9,000 a year for their education uh, at college. Students are having to struggle by without EMA this year because of the government's cuts. So we're here today saying we need to link up the struggles of students but also, uh, and very importantly, the, the trade union movement and the workers movement. It is exactly why we support the NSSN's call for a 24-hour general strike. It is the working class organised in trade unions that has the economic power to stop these cuts. It is the working class that if we go on strike, we can bring this country to a standstill. And that is the example that young people must follow. And that is why we must go on from here to push the TUC to name the date for the 24-hour general strike. We must take a great courage and take an example from our comrades in Portugal, Spain, Greece, and now our comrades in South Africa engaging in a heroic struggle. Because our members have been well skilled in the art of campaigning and organising, over the past six months, PCS members and HMRC have been taking industrial action, have been staging walkouts, have been campaigning around tax justice and as a result we have won 1,000 extra jobs. Our union is, is at the forefront of demanding we need coordinated action to defeat this government and we will fight tooth and nail to make sure every community activist, every trade unionist in our communities is actually given that idea and actually pressurises to make sure that it does take place. Because it's no good Ed Miliband coming here and saying that he's with us today. We don't want someone who's just with us. We want him to turn around and say that he's on the side of working men and working women and he's going to refuse to pay any further cuts. Despite the fact more can always be done by the movement, it has been a great day. The NSSN and PCS and a number of growing number of unions can be relied upon to organise and give the leadership because that's what's needed. On the 30th of November last year, we had an opportunity to really build the beginnings of an opposition. Unfortunately, some of the trade union leaders marched their members up the hill only to march them back down very, very rapidly. Liverpool, a Labour Council, a Labour Council are actually top of the league for the deepest cuts compared to any other council in the UK. You cannot open a paper today without reading about the detail of the kind of attacks that are being made up and down the country in practically every industry. That's not because George Osborne is evil, which he is. That's not just because Cameron is stupid, which he is. He's acting according to the laws of the capitalist system itself, which defines the profit the maximisation of profit is the laws of this system. And if you remain within the confines of capitalism, you will be compelled to carry out a similar policy. That's why we raise wide and clear the need for a clear socialist programme, for a fundamental socialist change. At the moment, the banks have 750 billion in their vaults. Worldwide, there's 21 trillion pounds or dollars which are in the banks of big industry. That's twice the GDP of Japan and the US put together. You could cancel all the debts of Britain and of Europe if that money was used. Why don't they use it in order to create productive potential? Because their system decries their criteria is profit. Unless they make profit, it's not going to happen. One day general strike is not going to overthrow capitalism. But if it's prepared properly, there are discussions, there are debates. We hammer home the realities of capitalist society. We outline a programme of saying we'll take over. We're not greedy. We won't take over every fish and chip shop. 
We've just taken over the 200 monopolies that control 70 to 75% of the economy. What is the alternative? What we've seen up to now is nothing compared to what capitalism has for our children and our grandchildren. Not a million unemployed, but the 25% unemployment in Greece. The horrors of what's happening in Spain or in Portugal today. Britain is already Greece in slow motion. If you want a future, that's the slogan there today. There's a clear choice. There's a future under capitalism, which is a dead end. There's a future for democratic socialism. That's the one that we want. That's what we have to fight for in the battles that are coming up now and in the future. Thank you. Get up, get up, your voices are needed. We can't become the pulse.